should say one of the really great stories that I got to tell was uh, the cultural history of, of Comanches in New Mexico. It's the, uh, the cultural and political influence is just amazing. And, and of course, uh, uh, you're part of that. So thank you so much. Catherine's part of that. And anyway, um, I've loved trains my whole life. I uh, just went to LA to my uncle's 80th birthday, and I, I, I waited too long for the planes, and the, the tickets started going through the roof. They almost hit $600, and I, I called up Amtrak, and I said, what, $80 each way? I'll go, I'll go for it. Um, you know, you take off uh, at, at sunset like this, uh, you wake up at 8 in the morning at Union Station, right? It's amazing, it's amazing. Um, as long as you can get to sleep. <laughs> That's what melatonin is for, right? You finally learned you should take three. It's okay to take three. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, I, should, uh, I should mention there's, there's a lot of, go ahead, there's a bunch of audio here. Um, the, all of, if you hear any trains or anything, they're all uh, recordings from uh, Denver and Rio Grande rolling stock. Uh, rolling, you know, the, the working lo locomotives, I, whenever I'm around them, I, I, uh, I record them and, and I get to embed them in presentations like this, right? So, the, so don't, be, don't be alarmed you start hearing the trains. Okay. Um, the title of this is uh, San Manuel Tren. I'm, I'm missing the train. Oh my God, it's leaving the mountain, right? Nuevo Mexico and the coming of the railroad, dreams of steam and nightmares of getting left behind. So Catherine asked me to talk about the cultural impact of the, of the railroad on New Mexico. And it's huge, it's huge, of course. So uh, we'll be exploring uh, everything from all of the sayings that we get from, uh, uh, from the railroad in our, in our colorful, popular language, both in English and Spanish. We've got corridos for you tonight. There's a whole joke cycle that, I, that I'm going to share with you, too. And what I'll do with the Spanish, uh, I don't want to clutter up. Uh, I, love, I love putting as many words in as possible as it is. So the least thing we need, the last thing we need is more translation. So I will translate the text as we, as we go along. Um, I'll also turn off my cricket phone uh, as we go along. Uh, it's actually someone who's lost. He's trying to get. <laughs> Let me. She's, she's never going to find this place. It's a miracle that you did. Uh, uh, Catherine? While he's doing that, let me just say, if you haven't had a chance to sign in, we will Okay, really it's on the east it. side of the tracks. Uh, you uh, if, if you're on that paseo, but and if you're you, you turn south, newsletters and what's that? Events we have, we'd be glad to put you on our list. If you'd rather not, just yeah, say south. on the it's right behind sign in. Okay. We're also very Great. interested to know how you found out about tonight, because we end up spending a little money on advertising and putting things on calendars. So it's really helpful to us, because we get donations from people, and we'd like to use their hard-earned money well. So if, if you can tell us how you found out, that's very useful. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kevin. Sure. Um, so anyway, uh, dreams of steam. And here's, here's of course, the, uh, the train going through the, the canyons of the Rio Grande up north of uh, Velarde, and nightmares of getting left behind. I should introduce these two uh, to you right away. Uh, we didn't make them up. It's part of a. It's actually a, a 19th century joke cycle that's still used today. This guy's name is uh, Don Cacahuate, Mr. Peanut, and his 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 wife is uh, is of course Doña Cebolla, uh, Lady Onion, right? And the 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 jokes are incredibly stupid jokes. But they're, uh, this is the guy who. Uh, he thought that the best strategy of all would be uh, uh, assimilation as, as quickly as possible. And he, he, uh, he just admires uh, everything the Americanos bring in, the train, uh, all of the new gadgets. He, he tries to learn English. He never can quite do it. 
uh, why is he a, a cacahuate? Why is he a peanut? We're figuring, we're trying to figure this out. I think it's because of his complexion. There were so many people here. There were so many smallpox <laughs> survivors in New Mexico that travelers would come through and say, wow, there's a lot of uh, pockmarked people over here. Those are the survivors. Uh, uh, one of those epidemics actually wiped out a quarter of the population before the vaccine came in. That's another story. So anyway, uh, he's, he's cacahuate because he's probably cacarizo, which means uh, scar-faced, right? Uh, and uh, these, are what you, they're, these are what you call in Mexico, they call them hueros de rancho. Hueros de rancho. There's a lot of fair-skinned people, huero is fair-skinned. There's a lot of fair-skinned people in the, back in the sierras of Chihuahua, and People can't figure out why they don't use their, their fair skin to more to their social advantage. They're quite content to be away from the mountains and just just doing uh, the ranchero thing. So that's that's where that came from. So you'll see you'll be seeing the cacahuate a lot in this presentation. And these cartoons were done by Eric Garcia, a student of mine, uh, now lives in Chicago, and he's the cartoonist for the Albuquerque Alibi. And Here's, here's where a lot of it started. Uh, we've got our own robber baron in these parts, but it's amazing because he's, 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 he's an amazing philanthropist, robber baron. Uh, General Palmer uh, was from a Quaker family back east, and he, he hated slavery so much that he finally he was one of those Quakers that finally picked up a gun and went to war and uh, distinguished himself in military service, but his his background was engineering, and on one of his trips to Wales, he actually saw a narrow gauge railroad and, and learned how you can cut the cost with narrow gauge, you can get into all kinds of unfriendly uh, places, uh, you can get into mountain gorges and, and whatnot with it. And this is his uh, personal cigar brand. I don't know what the brand was, but uh, he was an amazing guy. Uh, after he made his fortune, he built all these mansions, and you've probably seen the Antlers Hotel in Colorado Springs, and, and there's the route that he, that his company got through, uh, through the Royal Gorge. And uh, he, with his money, he did things like uh, help found Colorado College. Uh, he founded one of the historically black colleges back east. I forget the name of it, so don't ask me. Uh, and uh, he also founded the entire steel complex down in Pueblo, Colorado, which was a mainstay of the Colorado economy for a, a, a good long time. Okay, um, rails, and stuff, this is, this is great having this in the back. Right on time. Rails accelerated the arrival of mercantile capitalism and all of its minions to New Mexico. Indo-Hispano land-based cultures of habitat and corporate local economies in natural balance were forever disturbed. The shrieks of La Maquina, the great machine, that's what we call the locomotive, it's just La Maquina. The shrieks that the great machine brought in, ese animal que le dicen tren, that big animal that we call the train, that, that, that beast, right? From their first arrival in 1879, on a daily basis, they began disgorging strange and dangerous people, new ideas and new technologies as fascinating as they were frightening. They literally began devouring the land itself and its products, ore, coal, cattle, timber, chili. They swallowed and carried away whole groups of people, like the defeated Chiricahua Apaches, never to, be, never to see their homeland again. History itself was divided into two, antes del tren, before the train, and después del tren, afterwards. A new cultural economy emerged, the specter of tourism rides in on the rails, expecting and getting free access to almost everything. Cultural responses to the railroad can be heard in lore, in music, and in the courts. Rights of way, rights to land and water, rights to language and culture, are vigorously contested and negotiated. Aquí viene el tren. Here it comes. Se me va el tren. Don't get left behind. Above all, don't get railroaded. Those railroad men, they drink up your blood like wine. <laughs> Bob Dylan. 
Um, so here's our, it's a difference. Uh, you know, I, I, I think we probably had a cut above your normal uh, robber baron capitalist in our part of the world. Um, Why do so, you call it El Sueño? El Sueño, it's, it's like a dream, it's like... Uh, was it that line that was like a dream, Denver to Mexico? The whole thing is a dream. Mo modernization is a dream uh, that becomes a, a reality really quickly. And so here's here's the contestation to to all of that. You know, here's here's uh, New Mexico Gothic. You know, here's Cebuya uh, and and, um, and and Cacahuate in in Eric's imagination anyway. And and they so uh, they so much admired the Americanos or Don Cacahuate that he never could quite learn English. It's they're like hillbilly jokes. He's from the furthest highest part of the Sierra, and uh, he he doesn't treat Cebuya. Uh, uh, totally well. He doesn't beat her, but he but he's 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 not he's kind of mean to her sometimes, and he never gets the English. Uh, and their first their first little baby, the little cacahuatitos, and they don't even call them cacahuatitos. We call them pinacates. You can you can tell the influence of English creeping in. These are the pinacates, and what do they name him? They name him son of a biche. <laughs> Why? Cacahuate realizes that must be a really popular American name because all of these all these soldiers around Santa Fe, all these all these people coming in, they're always calling each other, you goddamn son of a bitch. So anyway, there's a there's son of a bitch. And this is one of the this is one of the classic jokes, kind of modernized originally. And these things are told all over Mexico. They're they're popular in northern Chihuahua. People still talk about cacahuate and its adventures. But it's usually a tortilla. Here's a, here it's a sandwich, un sandwich. And so you can tell, you can tell the, the American part coming in. And uh, San Obaviche, he, he's very hard to please. The guy's está llorando. Ay, daddy, daddy, ay, come on, why, why, why? He says, ¿Qué te pasa, San Obaviche? What the hell is the matter with you? And he says, he says daddy, 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 está muy fría. Está muy, muy fría mi tortilla, está muy frío mi sandwich. And so Cacahuate says, don't, no problem, I'll heat it up for you. And he goes like that. <laughs> and he gives it back to San Amaviche, and San Amaviche goes, ah, why, why, daddy, daddy? He says, ¿qué te pasa, San Amaviche? He says, ahora está muy caliente. Now it's too hot. So, uh, you're never going to get anywhere with these, with these people. But here's the empire. Here's the, here's the dream that became uh, a reality. Uh, here's General Palmer's dream. It was a huge dream. It's a dream very very connected to the Camino Real. It was his dream to, uh, uh, to connect Denver to Mexico City. And of course, he never, he never got past Trinidad. And there was a war fought over this. It was a war of thugs and pistoleros. It was a war of, uh, of just really unsavory types that both railroads uh, brought in to, uh, to see who who could win, who could take the station, as it were. And uh, so it all stopped right there for the, uh, for the, R for the DNRG. Um, it stopped at Raton, Raton Pass, but one of the consolation prizes is, uh, of course, uh, um, Royal Gorge, which is along in this area. And Royal Gorge is so narrow, if you've been up there, that there's only one, there's only room for one set of tracks. There was no way the two railroads could get in there. And so that's when General Palmer uh, got access to all of this, which is the Colorado Silver Country. And of course, he took advantage and made it, uh, made it clear up to uh, Salt Lake City as well. Uh, my wife tried to buy a train ticket uh, the other day to Denver. And guess what? They, they, the Santa Fe, the Santa Fe, uh, the Burlington Northern Santa Fe drops you off drops you off and puts you on a bus. And I'm sure it has something to do with this history. Amtrak. Yeah, Amtrak, Amtrak is not, you can't get to Denver. Okay. So uh, here's, here's some pictures of some of the players in this, in this war, in this little guerrilla war. Uh, these are, uh, this guy, you've all seen him on TV, he was actually a lawyer. And in Kansas, this was actually one of the people he was prosecuting. Just not a very nice guy. Um, uh, I don't know how many murders he was convicted of, or they tried to, they tried to get him. Uh, uh, Bat, Bat Masterson tried to put him in jail, but uh, I don't know. Uh, not long after that, he, he gets in touch with him, and he says, why, why don't you come to Colorado? We need your services out here. 
and so Dave Rudaba and and a whole bunch of other uh, uh, thugs. I love the word that we use in Mexico for them, sicarios. These are the these are the trigger men. These are the uh, and, and why romanticize them? They, they'll, they'll they'll shoot you as soon as they look at you, right? Why romanticize them? So uh, they're goons. They you know the Treaty of Boston is actually a, a court decision which which uh, divided the spoils between the two railroads. That's why uh, uh, the, the Santa Fe goes through Lamy, and this one only comes here. So anyway, uh, all kinds of work, all kinds of work, instant jobs. Uh, to, get to, be, to get to work on the railroad gave you a paycheck uh, and something that, uh, that your uh, neighbors back home did not receive. Uh, They'd have to wait around all year for the harvest or something to get any money, or if they wanted money, then they'd have to ride the new rails to the mines and, and to the, uh, all of the, the job opportunities further north. So just look at this tunnel. That's, that tunnel is still being used. Here's the Casa Redonda from, uh, from Chama, the roundhouse, and uh, I don't think it's standing anymore. But jobs, jobs, jobs. El capitalismo. And so, uh, Kakawatha is just fascinated by all of this, but he doesn't quite know how to get on board with it. He doesn't quite know what to do. And he tells, he tells his wife, he says, uh, he says, well, tengo paso libre. And that's, of course, what railroad employees got. The says, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Pack up the bags. And he takes her, he takes her down the rails. And, of course, uh, he provides all of the, uh, the choo-choo. He provides all of the sound effects. And, uh, and she goes, Cacahuate, Cacahuate, que paso? I thought you said it was paso libre. I thought we were going to get on a train. He says, it is paso libre. Quien te está cobrando? Who's, uh, who's charging you? Nobody's charging you. It's free. It's free. We get to, we get to follow these, these, these tracks all the way to California. And there's dozens of these jokes. There, there's even one where they find us. They're walking along the tracks, and, and they find an old car. With a, with a window, a car door with a window that worked. And, and of course, Cebolla gets to carry it, right? And, uh, and they're walking along, and I think, uh, you know, they get, uh, who knows how far they got, grants, uh, who knows? Uh, they uh, start getting hot, and uh, Cacahuate says, uh, Tengo calor, Cebolla, ¿por qué no bajas la ventana? ¿Por qué no bajas? Go, go ahead and roll that window down, I'm kind of hot. So this, this is what a tonton, that's what, a, what an idiot cacahuate uh, is. And to give you a, an idea of the magnitude of this, of this process, uh, you know, freeways disturb the land much more than, than railways, but look what it took to get enough, enough ties and, and trestles and everything. This is the Rio Grande, you know, the, my own, uh, uh, my wife's grandfather got a job up in Chamisal, you know, they cut down a whole forest. And floated it down the Rio Agudo, down to the Rio Grande, and this is this is what it looked like. Uh, not far north of, uh, well, it looks like we're south of Santa Fe, in between Santa Fe and Albuquerque for, for that shot. Um, what are cuartones? Cuartones are like uh, it's our word for like the basic timber unit. And Spanish is not a big viga or something. It's it's like a 12 foot uh, square. Uh, piece of wood, it's called a cuarton. So the, the lumbermen are called, we call them cuartoneros. Um, so here's, here's the deal, here's the deal. Uh, the timber starts, the forests start disappearing, right? Uh, the coal, big time coal, all around Trinidad, uh, uh, Chama, there's coal in Chama. Some people, they go ride the rails up from Antonito to Chama, they say, oh, how, how nice of them to build a, such a scenic railroad. And we're going, they, they were not after scenery. They wanted, they wanted access to the coal in Chama, and they wanted access to the, uh, uh, to the new gas and oil exploration in Farmington. And guess who took them the pipe for the next fuel that was going to replace everything? And of course, uh, there's the steel from Pueblo. There's the silver, the, the oil and gas. Uh, they used to take boxcars full of, uh, of stock and just let them loose. This happened around Española. They, they, they just let thousands and thousands of cattle uh, loose up into the forest. And, and the, the way that you, you go up into that forest now, and it's, 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 a, it, it, it's not a well forest. It's a sick forest. The, the second growth there is way 
too close together. It, it burns down way too easily. And this is, a, this of course, is where the, the devastation started. And the only one of these, uh, the only one of these activities that, that didn't leave a huge scarred impact on the land was, of course, agriculture. And that's where we get the name of the chili line. Uh, poor people in Denver, you know, they they, uh, they need our chili. They, uh, you know, what the nickname for Nuevo Mexicanos is up in Colorado. What do they call us? Chileros. Not los chileros. We're the Chile people. <laughs> We're the people of Chile, and so major, major export. Uh, okay, so here comes Turismo, and I tried to tell my friend uh, Will Roth about this. Uh, uh, he found in, in some of his research with maps and, and, uh, and tourism and stuff like that, you know, you think, you think about the, the mysterious uh, Sangre de Cristo uh, mountains and, and what comes to your mind when you hear that as a tourist. What do you think when you, when you hear Sangre de Cristo? It's got to be red. What else? The blood of Christ. Why? Sangria. Sangria. Like who's bleeding? Who's bleeding. Well, it's the, it's the sunset. It's, a, it, it, it's, a, it's the colors here. But what else is it? It's, it's, the, it's the passionate... Uh, 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 Christianity that's that that that's home to northern New Mexico, the penitentes, and you think all of these thoughts, and guess what? Guess what? Guess where? Guess where the name came from? Just take a wild guess. Where did the name come from? Sangre de Cristo. The missionaries is one theory. What's another theory? They saw the sunrise. Or they saw the sunrise, or who saw the sunrise? You know what they called it back in colonial times? You know what they called it? They called it La Sierra. Oh. On all the maps, it's La Sierra. Uh, this name was invented. This name first appeared in the tourist brochures of the of the DNRG. Oh my okay, God. so cultural tourism is born, right? And uh, that's what happens. And of course, here here we are on the way to on the way up to Chama and this incredibly beautiful uh, route that they that they took. This, up, up to this point in time, this was the most expensive uh, narrow gauge uh, track that was ever laid anywhere. I mean, it was, they made the decision to go over the, to go over Cumbres and Toltec uh, to get to Farmington. The other passes could have been done, but they chose this route, and by golly, they were gonna get there, right? And uh, so there, that's, how we, that's how we see it uh, today. Too bad they took, took up the tracks and sold them to, to Japan right before the war. Um, otherwise, we could get on at Santa Fe and, and ride up to uh, uh, Alamosa or, or wherever. And of course, finally we see Cacahuate makes it onto the train, and, but he can't figure out, he says, like, why are all the cebolla, cebolla, how come all the posts are moving? They're not usually moving, like, what's happening? What's happening? He says, ay, Cacahuate, we're moving. It's not the it's not the posts that are moving. How's that for stupid? <laughs> tonto. He's a real menso. He's worse than tonto. He's menso. Okay. And uh, okay. So uh, the it, it's such a big deal for the economic development in New Mexico. They say we got to have law and order out here. Robbing a train is a hanging offense. And this is the only fellow that ever got hung for robbing a train. Uh, this is up in Clayton, uh, and blackjack, uh, blackjack got hung. The only thing is they tied they tied the, the noose too loose, and the next picture is his uh, severed head rolling away in a in a black bag. It just popped his head right off his body. He was a big guy, anyway. So sorry, I didn't mean to. And then uh, the train just gobbled up whole whole groups of people. You're going to be. The next lectures are about the Hikarias. What happened with the Hikarias? First, they got chased off the plains. Then they 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 didn't get the reserve. You know, they didn't get some of the lands that they really loved. Uh, the Mora area. There were a lot of uh, plains Apaches in there. There's still names on the land grant. The, the Mora land grant is uh, in contact now with the heirs, uh, with the Hikaria heirs up there. And uh, anyway, the government learned learned a big lesson during the long walk. If you send people into exile on a long walk, they're going to remember every step 
back, and they're going to know how to get back home. By the time the Chiricahuas were, were defeated, the government said, this is it. This is it with Jeronimo and, and these folks. Uh, we are going to send them to the end of the earth. We're going to put them on the rails, and we're going to take them all the way till there's no more rails, Jacksonville, Florida. Oh. And they, they and they never they never made it back home. Jeronimo made it to to Fort back to Fort Sill, but he never got to see uh, Chiricahua. In fact, a lot of the descendants of these people never saw the Chiricahua Mountains until 1979 or something when they finally went back home. So it, it's. Uh, uh, Banishment by train is a big deal. You know. uh, you'll hear a lot about, uh, what's the other lecture about, Catherine? No. First, the immigrants the coming on. And then the immigrants coming on the rails. Okay. Um, so that, that's, it's a really, really uh, tragic story. Uh, Jeronimo is not very well regarded by a lot of Apaches because they could have had their reservation out in Arizona, in the Turkey Creek Mountains, uh, near the White Mountain. They were all set to, to settle down and get their res, and Jeronimo would just not give it up. He would just not give it up. He wanted to kill as many Mexicanos as he possibly could. That's what he said in his, uh, in his uh, newspaper interviews. And they said, like, uh, what, what would you do different if you had to do it again? He said, kill more Mexicans. Because he saw them kill his own family, the Mexican soldiers, mm -hmm. right? So anyway, big tragedy. Um, Okay, another tragedy comes along. Uh, speaking of jokes and folklore, have you have you guys noticed how many Texas jokes there are in New Mexico? <laughs> it's no accident. Humor tends to uh, to mitigate. It tends to to uh, sweeten up things a little bit. But the first uh, our first experience with Texas was the 1841 military invasion, and they 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 kind of. Uh, uh, they kind of mollify that. They call it the Texas Santa Fe Expedition. But if it was a trading expedition, how come they had so many guns? And our friends, the Comanches, defended New Mexico from the Texans. They gave them hell all the way up from Austin. They came to Santa Fe. They said, hey, there's a whole army on the way. Governor Armijo captured them, marched them to Mexico City. And that was the first contact. And they said, oh, no, Los Tejanos. The second contact was, of course, the Civil War. Oh, no, here come the Tejanos again to take us over. They're going to make us their slaves. Who knows what they'll do to us? And, of course, uh, after the Civil War, look who shows up on the train. All of the sicarios, all of the thugs and goons in the whole world. And why romanticize these people? Again, they would shoot you as soon as look at you. They were hired by big ranches to get the ranches bigger and, and kill the homesteaders, and they killed just as many Anglo-American homesteaders as they did Hispano homesteaders. Go for the men, string them up, shoot them up, and the women will go back to town and leave the land, and, and then your ranch can be bigger. And then they ran into uh, El Fuego Baca, and you all saw the, the Walt Disney movie. Uh, after, if you're my age anyway, first it was Davy Crockett, and that was not politically very correct, right? But then. The El Fago Baca series was amazingly accurate. And it's hard to believe that Walt Disney could do such a great job. The Nine Lives of El Fago Baca. He, uh, he, he uh, held them off. He held them off in this little house uh, out in, uh, today they call it, uh, what do they call it, Reserve. But it's Plaza de San Francisco. They fired 4,000 shots into that house. And every time they'd come up to see if he was dead or something, he'd, He'd shoot through the door, and he killed four of them, and, and they had been just raising hell. They had been terrorizing the locals, terrorizing them. They even, there was a goat herder that they, they even took him in the bar and castrated him. Well, I know it's... Wasn't uh, he really young, too? Wasn't he, he like was young. He was a young guy. He was a young guy. When and he did that? We don't have any... The only corridos we have about him are election corridos, because he lived mm -hmm. a... Uh, if he had died in that siege, there would be many ballads, many corrido ballads about our hero, uh, El Fago Baca. Uh, so, uh, along with, uh, with everything else, here come these new railroad towns. I, I'm still looking for a good picture of uh, La Española, because uh, the idea is like, where's the plaza? You go to Chama and say, ¿Dónde está, ¿dónde está la plaza? Hispanic uh, settlements, Hispano Mexicano settlements are off the, the old uh, plan of the Indies, right? And 
look how these towns are set up. They're strung out just like the rails are. Same thing with Española. Where's the Española Plaza? Well, it's kind of invisible. Across the river. This is some kind of new thing that they put in that, that no one hangs out there. They're, they're trying to get more people to hang out there, but, but the, the plaza for that area was Santa Cruz de la Cañada de los Españoles Mexicanos. And that's what they call themselves, you guys. My students say, like, are we Spanish, are we Mexican? I say, I'm not going to tell you who you are. Look at your history, look at the documents. Santa Cruz de los Españoles Mexicanos, we're both. Um, so uh, here's, here's how it changed architecture. Everything changed. And uh, this particular joke is uh, Eric, I didn't tell Eric to set it in row. This joke is, uh, is, is set in row. It's not DNRG, it's Santa Fe at Santa Pica. And he lives way up in the Sierra. Maybe I'll tell this one first. He lives way up in the Sierra. And he hears them. He hears the train. And he goes down with his friend. And they take their little burro with, their, uh, with them, and they're trying to make it to Santa Fe. And he says, aquí está la huella. Aquí está la huella. Here's the tracks that that animal makes, that that big beast makes. And we follow these tracks, and, and we'll get to Santa Fe. Let's go to Santa Fe in this new way. And they were walking along, walking along. Pretty soon, there's the whistle. Here comes the train. They barely jump off the tracks in time. Boom. Pobrecito burro. Pobre burro, the donkey, the donkey gets slaughtered by the locomotive, right? And so when, when Don Cacahuate finally makes it to Santa Fe, here's probably the first toy store in Santa Fe, and he goes in and, hey, they have electricity, there's a little toy train. He walks in there, he says, oh my God, and he picks up a baseball bat, y empieza a smashear el tren, a destruir el tren. And uh, the, the poor guy says, oh, cacahuate, cacahuate, que estas haciendo? What are you doing? What are you doing? And he says, oh, here's a little one. Here's a little one. I better kill it while I can. When they grow up, they kill burros. So, mata, cuando crece, cuando crece, mata burros. So, I gotta, I gotta kill him while, I, while, I, while he's a match for me. And so, finally, he finally said, boy, yeah, learns the whole thing and they come down to the station in row and and Kakawate they, they buy the tickets and everything and they're waiting and, and he hears the whistle and he just gets so excited, he gets so excited that he has to go to the bathroom in the in the train station. And he's in there and he's in there and they don't stop for long and and there's the train uh, there's the train uh, you know steaming away and he misses the train and he comes out and he says Se voy a dame esos boletos Give me these, give me the tickets. I'm gonna tear them up and just cacahuate, cacahuate. We can use them on the next on the next train. Why are you tearing up the tickets? He says, Pasele mala la compañía. I want to get back at this train company. I'm gonna tear up the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, Palmer, General Palmer got got uh, very disappointed by everything that happened and the and the Treaty of Boston and and yeah, yeah, he made it to Salt Lake, but his dream, his dream was Camino Real. Let's make it to Mexico, so guess what he does? He lets everybody deal with everything up north, and he goes to Mexico City, and he oversees the leg of the first track running north from Mexico City. That's our, that's our General Palmer, right? And uh, of course, every, every little spur that you that you start has to, you have to get stock and you have to get people to invest. And of course, the, the National Railroad Company was eventually part of uh, the Mexican state. Um, so here we are. If I saw, well, he got permission to, mit, to get to Española. Okay? And for a number of years, the, the train, the line just ended in Española. He's going, Española no es la capital. No es la capital. Vámonos a Santa Fe. And so they did some wangling, and they did it in different pieces. And here's here's the uh, here's the Ottawa crossing. Uh, there was a town in there now where, where the city's starting to get water. The Buckman area was a whole was a little railroad town. You could, uh, in fact, uh, if, you, if you took the train at the station here, that's where you would that's where you would go. You cross. You go down. You go down by the Lupe Street. You, you hit Hakona, you cross over in, in Ottawa, and you get up to uh, 
Española. And here, of course, is Tomasitas. There's that university building. My, my father-in-law learned how to type in, in a class. He took a class back in that day and age. Um, so, oh my god, is it mass? Is mass going on? I don't know. This is what you're supposed to do every time you cross a road, so there's Agua Fria. So, we got to find someone, I don't know if anybody still remembers juicy little details like this, but did they, what did they do when they came to Agua Fria Street on Sundays at 10, or 8, or 7, or whenever the misas were? You know, did the people in the church have to listen to that, or, uh, or was there, were there any courtesies uh, exchanged? Who knows? It would be a great, if, if you find the answer to that, call me up. Call up Catherine, right? Um, I was over at the cathedral the other day, uh, taking some visitors through and saying, you know, here's Marco Senison, here's 1539, and here's Oniate, 1598, and here's the Pueblo Revolt, and here's everything that's going on. And I went, oh my God, what is, what is this? What is this? And uh, I went inside, and there, one of the sisters inside, she says, well, that's the railroad. That's the last spike in the railroad. Uh, so important for Santa Fe, so important for the cathedral. Except for the cathedral, like, the railroad gets on the door, of the, on the bronze, the door of the cathedral? How did that happen? She said, well, uh, how do you think the stained glass windows made it in without breaking up? If they had been brought by a mule train or any other conveyance, uh, they never would have made it. Uh, as soon as, it, as, soon as the, the, the chili line came in, that was one of the first things, uh, one of the first really prized uh, freight items that came in was uh, was stained glass. And you got to have stained glass in a cathedral, otherwise it's not a cathedral, right? So um, let's explore. There's a whole musical record of all of this, all these impacts too. So let's explore our region a little bit. Uh, we're going to go down to Sonora. That's actually one of the wrecks of the, uh, the DNRG, but uh, this is the most famous locomotora or máquina in Mexico. Its, uh, its number is 501. You say 501 and people know exactly what that is. You knew we would make it back to New Mexico. Here's, here's our most famous train, Corrido. In 1929, we had a huge monster flood. It was I don't know if it was bigger or smaller than the 1903. We can ask uh, Bill DeGuiz about stuff like this. He's got all those CFS numbers in his head. But it took out a lot. It took out a lot. All, of, all the bridges in Albuquerque went down. And here's a, here's a shot of uh, the San Marcial Bridge with the train going across it. I think this bridge went down too. And luckily, no one, no one died. Uh, the, the trains came up from El Paso and, and took everybody away. Uh, the Red Cross came in to full uh, uh, steam, right? And, uh, and relocated everybody in Albuquerque and, and Belen and, and Socorro. And, and actually, no, my, my John de Fleece, my, my brother-in-law's grandfather, worked at the Casa Redonda in San Marcial. What a proud railroad guy he was, no? And uh, it, of course, uh, swept everything away, and the water kept rising, and, uh, but nobody died. Nobody died. And, and here's, uh, here's what it sounds like. Freddie Brown. The 20th of August, oh, I can barely stand to remember that Rio Grande took the town of San Marcial. El día 20 de agosto no me quisiera acordar. Él se llevó el río grande, el pueblo de San Marcial. So it was a sad afternoon. I know the date. The trains came from El Paso to help the people. Era una tarde muy triste.
is a lot of water. The, the houses were swimming. Up on the hills, the people were crying. Towards the end and towards our, our question, our question uh, part of the program, and here's of course that big uh, what do they call those things? Um, there's some railroad term for where it does that, and the trains can go this way and they can come that way. Why? Yeah, that's what normal people would call it. Is some kind of a why? That's the loop, huh? That's the loop. Yes. No, no, it's not. Oh, this is the loop. That's the loop. They call this the loop. That's right. The that other thing is, there's another term for it. I'll just have to become more of a railroad, railroader to get it. But uh, anyway, uh, after a while, Kakawata just couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. He was so excited and so frustrated. Everything he was doing was coming to naught. And uh, people were laughing at him. He never learned any English. Uh, he was just having a hell of a time. And he got paranoid in his old age. He would hear the train whistle. Whenever he heard the train whistle, he would hit the deck. He would lie down on the ground with his head over his, with his hands over his head, and uh, his friends would say, "Qué te pasa, cacahuate? What is wrong with you? And don't you know that the train comes down the track, and it, you know, it's not going to hurt you unless you're right in the middle of it of the track, <coughs> like your friend's burro, right? And he says, "Oh no, 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 no." What if it comes sideways someday? <laughs> so, how can I want this worst nightmare? And uh, you can do this as much in Spanish as you can in English. Look how much, look how much this technology has penetrated our uh, consciousness. Look at all these expressions. You know, uh, you thought bells and whistles was a was a computer uh, software term? No, no. Uh, if, if you don't like to backtrack, uh, hey, if you're if you're on the wrong track, look at this. We're, it's saturated. This was the means of transportation. It's another world. Uh, the only time I've experienced it was in northern Mexico and places like Creel, uh in Chihuahua before the highways got in, and everybody set their watches. They knew how to set their watches. The trains were on time, kind of coming up from those mochis. And you get a little peek of, of what that 19th century world was like when everything revolved around uh, this uh, this animal, right? Um, sabotage. I, I didn't know this one. Did you know this one? No. You know, the, I thought sabot were shoes. They are. But, but they, they're but, railroad shoes. Yeah, railroads. Railroads have shoes too. Oh, that's what they're they're from from yeah, there's tons of there's tons of sabots right out here. That's what holds the rail to together. No? That's what holds them to the. That's what the spikes go in if it's a if it's wooden ties, right? But look at this. Look at this. Of course, getting railroaded is uh, we know what that means. Uh, the railroads would come through and nothing would stop them. There's nothing you could do. They were just going to come right through wherever they went, and you got and you'd know when you got railroaded. Um, so just look at it. I, I love feather bedding. Uh, hey, there's a bunch of feather bedding down at UNM, right? Um, <laughs> they, uh, when they switched over, when they switched over from diesel, uh, the town, the mines of Madrid, went uh, dormant, and there was no more need for coal, and and so the diesel comes in, and so what are you going to do with the fogoneros, the guys who who shovel the coal into the boiler? Right? Uh, they still had their contracts, they still had their union, and for a few years they got paid to do nothing. Right? Uh, the feather beds, they brought in feather beds, put them in the cabooses. I'm sure they didn't sleep day and night like they say they did, but uh, that's where the term comes from. Um, Great if these if this route still existed. Wouldn't it be great if you could take the 
the train up to uh, Servietta and get his house. And it's, uh, it's a bunch of nostalgia there. Um, it's, it's the end of the line, but not really. Uh, we keep reinventing the train. Um, I love this line from a, it's a popular song, and it's, it's called, uh, look at the metaphor, El tren, el tren de la ausencia se va, mi boleto no tiene regreso. And you can have everything I gave you, but I'm not giving you back my kisses. No, no te devuelvo mis besos. Beso. Um, when, when, you, when you break up with your significant other, that's what you get on. El tren de la ausencia, the, the train of absence. Bye-bye, folks. Thank you. Thank you.